Today we're diving deep into a fascinating geological phenomenon that I've come to call shadow volcanoes. This isn't a term you'll find in a textbook, it's one I've coined to describe a curious and largely unnoticed aspect of the geology of Eastern Australia, including Victoria and Tasmania, and the islands in between. So let's dive right in and demystify what these shadow volcanoes are all about. Our story begins around 85 million years ago, when the continents of Australia and the newly forming continent of Zealandia, where New Zealand lies, were separating from one another, a geological event that gave rise to the Tasman Sea. This separation, or rifting, as it's called, caused weaknesses in the Earth's crust, creating pathways for magma to upwell from deep within the Earth and erupt onto the surface. This resulted in numerous volcanic eruptions, particularly in what is now Victoria, which spewed copious amounts of fast flowing lava onto the land, creating what we now call the Older Volcanics. Fast forward to roughly 30 million years ago, Australia is moving north ever more. It slowly moves over a so-called hotspot, an area within the Earth's mantle from which an abnormal amount of magma rises. This hotspot resulted in a series of volcanic eruptions. Much like a string of dominoes falling one after another, these eruptions began in northern Queensland, and over millions of years, progressively moved southwards as Australia continued its journey northwards over it, resulting in volcanic activity in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, and even all the way down as far as King Island and Tasmania. Now it's essential to understand the type of lava these volcanoes produce. They were mostly spewing out a kind of rock called basalt. Compared to other volcanic rocks high in silica such as andesite and granite, basalt isn't as good at resisting erosion. Over millions of years, the relentless forces of wind, water and ice have worn away these basaltic landscapes, causing significant erosion. In some cases, the volcanic vents didn't release enough lava to form a large permanent structure, so they eroded away quicker. This is where we get to the concept of shadow volcanoes, essentially we're talking about places where there were volcanic eruptions in the past, but they aren't listed as occurring on any geological maps. In fact, their entire existence is strangely omitted which I assume is due to some kind of misinterpretation, possibly attributed to the significant erosion that's occurred in some places or the lack of voluminous flows being released in others. So yeah, as a result they're not listed in any of the available geological maps, much to my frustration and constant annoyance. I can't even begin to tell you how many areas I've studied that would list the land as being purely sedimentary, only for me to drive there and shout at the fact that there are literally dozens of tiny stubs of highly eroded volcanic vents everywhere. My mates know full well about my annoyance regarding this subject. These little guys were so hidden that it's possible they've remained obscured from geologists themselves. And well, since they're shadows of their former selves, and since they appear to be a volcanic version of a ghost so to speak, I've given them the term shadow volcanoes. So how do we know these shadow volcanoes exist if we can't see many of them? Well this is where the science of geophysics comes into play, by studying the magnetic properties of rocks in a given area, we can identify the telltale signs of past volcanic activity, even if the physical evidence has largely been eroded away, and this is purely because basalt is rich in iron and it pops out like a sore thumb amongst the surrounding sediments and granites. And once we know where to look, then we can go out into the field and search for any remaining physical evidence of the volcano, even if it's just a small stub or rounded hill, which it usually is. And as you can tell, magnetics is no joke. Some of these volcanoes release so much lava that you can make out the conical shape on the magnetics themselves. But others, well, they're cheeky. They hide very well. Check this out, this is the Ringwood area east of Melbourne, right next to the Warrandyke goldfields. I went to my mate's house last week because he wanted me to dig his yard and see if he had gold. I checked the geological maps before I left, and as you can see, the Anderson's Creek layer is listed here as being purely sedimentary, compared to this layer right here, which is an example of where basalt was identified. The Greensboro basalt layer erupted around 23 million years ago when Melbourne's rift zone was at its most active. So I drive to my mate's place and what do I see? Basalt everywhere, everywhere. Basalt of varying kinds too, and of varying ages. So we have multi-phase eruptive byproducts here, none of which are listed. This could be basalt from 500 million years ago when Victoria was first born, 
20 million years ago when the rift occurred, or related to the hotspot and released within the past 7 million years. So naturally I step out of my car, greet my maid, and immediately crack it over his fence, which is constructed out of the very basalt that was apparently never erupted here, according to geological maps. And to further up salt in the wound, all of his neighbours fences were constructed from the very same basalt. So I jump on magnetics, and it doesn't appear like much, true? This could be more impressive compared to that magnetics image I showed you of that massive conical volcano. But let me show you something. The cheekiness of the shadow volcanism is about to be unveiled for all to see. Because these, yes these, these are all freaking volcanoes. They're either small eruptive vents of varying ages or very old medium sized conical structures that have been highly eroded. And look at them all, it's sickening. Now all of this may seem like a minor detail, but it's a significant issue for anyone studying or exploring the geology of Eastern Australia. I've personally encountered this situation numerous times during my career. I'd start by studying a geological map of a particular area, then when I got there in person, I found that the real world landscape was dominated by highly eroded basaltic rock, not the other types of rocks indicated on the map meaning I now had to dig through what could be many feet, or in the worst case scenario many metres worth of highly eroded basaltic overburden. The implications of this can be profound. For instance, if you're searching for gold deposits, it's important to know whether the landscape you're exploring has experienced volcanic activity in the past. When basalt is in its lava state, it readily flows in a stream-like manner, covering up the old rocks that contain the gold that I am seeking making them harder to find and more work to reach. These eruptions would often disrupt and redirect ancient river courses too, affecting where gold might be found. And when multiple eruptions occur over a long period of time, temporary streams that form post-eruption get created, sediment accumulates for a period of time, then another eruption occurs and a new river takes over and it changes course again, meaning multiple placer deposits could exist in the location as a result of the volcanic component and I need to know that, <laughs> like you know, far out. <laughs> this issue of shadow volcanoes is particularly relevant in mineral rich areas such as Maligal and certain regions around the Grampians area. However, the most striking recent example I found was at King Island. Despite the clear evidence of volcanic activity on the island, as indicated by magnetic data, the official geological map of the island does not even include or even state the existence of any recent volcanic rocks occurring here. This discrepancy underlies the importance of acknowledging the existence of shadow volcanoes in regions like Victoria. Their presence can significantly affect the approach to geological exploration and research in these areas. It's a lesson in how our understanding of the earth continually evolves and how new concepts like shadow volcanoes can dramatically alter our interpretation of the landscape around us. By shedding light on these shadow volcanoes, we can further our understanding and appreciation of our planet's complex and ever-evolving story. So, the next time you look at an unimpressive hill, you could be looking at a cheeky shadow volcano hiding from plain sight. Thanks for watching.